guys. Hello, Hello. 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 Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. How are y'all doing today? Great. I feel like that question is just such a setup. Because uh, <laughs> one, one of these days, somebody's going to say, like, not, not good. Are you trying to listen to all that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it, it's good. I, I, I believe that you would. I believe that you would. You would, yeah. So uh, we're doing this series, right? Um, two little words that will change your life. Um, and this series is based off of the two words that will change your life, right? It's um, the seven I am statements that Jesus used to um, tell us what his attributes are. Mm. I am the bread of life. He is our sustenance. Mm. He is who we feed off of. That yeah. word is the living word that we sustain ourselves with. Amen. I am the door. We can only enter through him and find that pasture. We can only enter through him yeah. uh, into eternal life. Oh you have, um, I am the light of the world, right? Um, without him, there is no light in the world. Mm -hmm. He is our light. He is the one that guides us mm -hmm. through. Um, you have, I am the resurrection because Jesus proves uh, Christianity with his resurrection without Without that resurrection, Christianity doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's not even it's not even true. Yeah. Why why does it even matter if it's not true? Mm -hmm. Today uh, we're going to be focusing on the Good Shepherd. Um, today's actually the uh, sixth entry. Um, then one one that I missed was I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Only through Him can yes. we make it to the Father. Yeah. Um, but today is the Good Shepherd. The title um, that I have for you today is Follow the Leader. Hmm. Now, I, I just want to preface. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself today, um, and that is in no way an imputation on you guys, but I feel like in order to uh, relate to an audience and in order to um, relate to and preach to you guys, I feel like um, it's easier when I give you real life mm -hmm. scenarios. Yeah, sure. Maybe you can look into a, a little bit of what my story is and maybe relate a little bit to that and say, hey, you know, this is what he went through and might be similar to what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's follow the leader because um, in life, I feel like I've tried to find, find my way through being led by so many other people. Mm -hmm. when, we're, uh, when we're growing up, um, when I was a kid, and I feel like uh, everybody does this to some effect, right? When we're growing up, when we have parents, we have our guardians, we kind of, we go to them. And me personally, I went up to them and I was like, mom, dad, how do I do this thing called life? <laughs> like, what is it that I do? I have, me, me personally, I've always been a very vigorous person, right? Like, I have all of this pent up energy. And I feel like um, you, all you got to do is point me in the right direction. <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna work towards that. I'm a, I'm a worker baby. Mm -hmm. So I can remember going up to my parents and just asking them, like, you know, I have all this energy. Like, what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. Mom, mom, dad, like, what is it that I do? Mm -hmm. And I can remember they were just kind of like, um, well, son, just do your best. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, well, yeah. I mean, I know do my best. Right. I, I know that, but that. but what is it that I do with it? My dad's just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of when I realized, right? Like, we hit 25, 26, 27, and now I'm 28. And I'm kind of finally realizing, like, nobody knows what they're doing. No. <laughs> nobody knows. We, 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 we go to our parents acting like they have this book of life. This is the thing that, these are the things that we're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. We expect them to know, mm -hmm. but they don't know any better than we do. Mm -hmm. And this is not an attack on parents, by the way. Dan, <laughs> you, you, too here. you guys are great parents. My parents are also great parents, so don't take it the wrong way. Right. But um, we do this with every other aspect of life, right? Like We might do this with, um, with our baseball coaches. I know I do. Right. Um, my baseball coach was a prominent figure in my life. He taught me these attributes that I have where, you know, um, I just, if, if I work hard enough at it, then I will get it. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of go through life with this 
preconceived notion that like if we go to the right person here on earth mm -hmm. if we go to the right person somebody is going to direct us in the right direction mm -hmm. but um i hate to tell you but uh no one will mm -hmm. there's there's no person worldly at least uh, in the flesh that you will go to that's going to have the answer to literally everything True. Yep. that you want. True. And if you don't believe that it's not your parents, let's just look into scripture, right? Um, so chapter 9, we're focusing today on chapter 10, um, where the Good Shepherd is contained. But if we look at uh, chapter 9, um, it focuses on Jesus healing a man who was born blind. Mm -hmm. And basically what, uh, what the word blind in the Bible here means is that a man who can't see. Oh. Mm. <laughs> He's the oh. only one that got it. Mm. I got it. I just couldn't. Mm. No. <laughs> no, but um wow. so, so uh this man is proclaiming that uh, that Jesus is the one who healed his blindness. Mm. Right. Um he's going to the townspeople, he's going to the Pharisees, and literally no one believes him. Mm. They're actually ready to excommunicate him from the town. They were going to kick him out of the synagogue, which uh, the synagogue at the time was um, was basically everything, their whole life was surrounded around the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And the, the political figures and the religious figures, the Pharisees, did not believe that Jesus was this promised Messiah. Mm -hmm. But um, so this blind man is proclaiming that like Jesus is the one who, who cured this man's blindness. Mm -hmm. We look in, give me one second to look for it. We look in uh, verse 22, I'll just read it for you. Um, his parents, oh wait, sorry, a little bit further back. Um, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight mm -hmm. until they had called the parents of him mm -hmm. who had received his sight. And they asked them saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? Hmm. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we don't know. Or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Hmm. He is of age. Ask him. Hmm. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. Hmm. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So, you know, we go all we go to all of these people, right, and expect them to, to have all the answers. We go to them and expect that they're going to die for us and protect us, um, you know, over everything. But here it's clear that like the people sometimes the people that are the closest to us in life, when it's convenient for them, they will go away. When when it possibly means their life. They're not willing to put it all on the line and risk everything for you. And I'm not saying that your parents, of course, would, would leave you. But this is just a biblical example of how sometimes we put all of our stock yeah. into people here on earth. Yeah. But it might not actually pan out for you. Yeah. And, you know, the, the leaders and the religious, the religious leaders and the political figures also then kick this man out anyway. Mm -hmm. They kicked him out of the synagogue. <laughs> so moral of the story there is all of these people that this blind man went to to, to protect him, mm -hmm. yeah. they all left. Yeah. Yeah. He, he put all of this stock in all of these people that were supposed to lead him right. in life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But no one stood the test of time. No one stood by him. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason that Jesus is different. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray real quick and get a little ahead of myself. Father God, thank you for this gathering of all of us here today. Lord, I pray that you move me out of the way. You speak through me right here and now. Yes. And you give you you feed the people that are here. You feed the people that are at home listening uh, from your word. You give them everything that they need. Um, to go forward in life. You give them everything 
that they need to make the decision to drop everything and leave everything behind to follow you. Because, Lord, I, I know that in my own personal experience, you have showed me that in order to truly follow you, I cannot serve anything else. I cannot be holding on to anything else. I have to drop all of that and trust you to walk forward and to be with you. So, Lord, help, help me or, or, Lord, speak through me now so that the people can see all that they need to. They can hear all that they need to to make that decision to drive everything here and now and follow you. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys here um, really value your independence? Mm. I feel like um, I feel like in this culture, it, it's very um, we're we're being taught from a very early age that we don't need anybody. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need people, mm -hmm. right? You can find your own way. You can get it all done all by yourself. We don't want to depend on anybody right. financially. We don't want to depend on anybody emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually, anything like that. I, I feel like media definitely tells us, mm -hmm. or they they advertise us mm -hmm. that you can be God. Mm -hmm. You can be your own God. Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody. True. And my only question to you is, pending that, is um, what's going to happen when you don't know what to do? Right. What's going to happen when, me, me personally, right, just using myself as, as an example, going forward in life, um, I have always been a person that I'm trying to take the least bit of instruction, the least bit of correction, you know, this tiny little bit of information and go as far as I can with it. And what will end up happening is, is like, I actually, uh, I, I'm not bragging here. I like to pride myself in. I'm, I'm able to make a lot out of this little bit. I am. But what, is end up, what has ended up happening is, is I can only come so far. Yeah. I only ever get so far. And then what will happen is, is all of those people that I talked about in the beginning, where like, um, I would expect all of these people to leave me, mm -hmm. I would end up going back to those people and they don't even have the answers for me. <laughs> They've, that little bit, you know, that's what they had to give and that's all that they could give. Well. So my question is, is like, what happens when that happens? And I've gone through, I've gone through a lot of times to where like this is very confusing and this is very, um, it's very discouraging because I feel like um, I, I try to go through life so much with this preconceived notion uh, and everything that I've got from media that tells me like, I can do it. I can handle it. I don't need anybody else's instruction. I don't need anybody else's help. I can do it all myself. But, uh, That's all right. That's all right. The truth is, is like, um, the truth is, is I can't do it. Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, I can do nothing. That that little bit and that um that that vigorous energy, that little pieces of those little pieces of information that I um, am able to stretch out. As far I, I always come to a point to where like my world comes crumbling down. Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, and it's funny that like the Bible kind of describes us as sheep, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you know anything about sheep, Daniel kind of like touched on this a few weeks ago. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> sheep are dumb. Um, there's a special needs. There, there, there's good reason that uh, that they need a shepherd. There's good reason that they need a shepherd. They um they need to be they need to be guided everywhere that they go. Yes. They have zero defense mechanisms. <laughs> it's interesting that um what well, what's interesting about that is that um, the only defense mechanism that they have is they, they they can actually band together. Yeah. Right. They can band together and maybe scare the wolves. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the only thing that they can do is run away. <laughs> In fact, um, 
sheep are so interesting that like if they don't have a shepherd what will happen is is like their hair and their fur, fur will grow so big to where like they literally can't even move yeah. or get anywhere that's true yeah. so they are literally physically emotionally and spiritually dependent yes. on a shepherd yes. without a shepherd they will die yes mm. yes Lord. without the shepherd to fight off the off the wolves yes. those wolves are gonna eat these sheep alive, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, wow. Have you ever heard of a, Have you ever heard of an independent sheep? No. <laughs> Do you know why you haven't? Because they're all dead. <laughs> they're literally all dead. <laughs> so, so what are we left with, right? Like. What we're left with here is that um, no one, no one's going to stand the test of time. They're all going to leave us. Worldly people, you know, the people that you know and love, like, I'm sorry, but the, the truth is, is that, like, they might, they, they tell you that they love you, and they do. I'm not trying to tell you that nobody loves you. I'm not trying to tell you that. Well, maybe some do. No, I'm just kidding. I, I love you. No one else does. No, but um, when it's when it's convenient for you, people, or when it's convenient for them, people might leave. Yeah. The leaders that you have come to know might not be the right people to go to. True. They can only give you a limited amount of information to get through this life with. So if no one, if no earthly person is the answer mm. then who is mm. who is mm. and that's when we can uh, look into the text jesus says most assuredly i say to you mm. he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in some other way mm. the same as a thief and a robber but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep mm. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name mm. and leaves them out. Mm. So it's important to know that difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like all the people that we've ever known, those aren't like the, those aren't the right leaders. It's important to follow the right leader, mm. and you will know him when he shows himself to you. You will know him when he manifests in your life. Mm. So all the anticipation here, here's the actual focus text. Mm. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. Mm. So Jesus is saying, don't worry about all of those other people. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah. My Lord. Don't worry about what everybody else tells you. Well, Don't worry about where everybody else is trying to guide you because well, I am the good shepherd. Woo! I'm the one who knows where to go. No one else does. Right. When it's convenient for you, they will leave. That's right. yeah. When it's convenient for you, they will leave. And in fact, here it says, sorry, I missed my place. So he, he's going to do the opposite of leave, and he already has done the opposite of leave you because yeah. he has already laid down his life for you. Right. He has already died for you. Right. Do you know anybody else in your life right now who has already done that for you? No. no. You know? And in fact, um, if we think about uh, Psalm 23, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He will leave you wanting nothing because he has already well, given you everything that you will possibly need in this life. Lord. He will leave you without a want. Mm -hmm. He will lay down his life for you. He himself is the very sustenance that we need Ooh. to walk forward mm -hmm. and to go through this life. And without him, there is no life. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the reason that I bring all of this to you is because me personally, right, I have tried every single other avenue. Yeah. I really have. I've listened to everybody else's advice. 
I've listened to my parents' advice. I've listened to baseball coaches' advice. I've listened to bosses' advice. And I've lived my life in a way that is pretty much according to like what everybody else has told me to do. And the only thing that I have ever found is that it leaves me wanting. Mm. It doesn't give me all the things that I need. It puts me in a position to where when I'm resting on the word of all of these other people, and it's, it's not going to get me all of the way through. Right. It's just not. The only thing that I haven't tried is to put literally every single ounce of my stock into what the word of God says. Mm. That's just the truth. I'm just leveling with you. Yeah. It really is. Um, I, I put my. I find myself in positions to where I'm trusting everybody else's word except the word of God. Mm. And all of those battles that you're having right now, going on mentally, mm. all of those negative thoughts that like you can't do it, mm. or um, all of those thoughts like you can't lead um, a group of people. You can't get that job. You can't You can't do any of this stuff by yourself. This is where things um this is where things sound a little bit abrasive. I'm going to be totally honest, right? By yourself, you can't do any of those things. You need somebody to lead you through. Yeah. And that person is Jesus. Yeah. That person is Jesus. Mm. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this life. Um, thank you for your word, that if we abide by your word, um, we will never be put to shame, Lord. Mm. Um, you are the sustainer of all things. Yes. You hold all things together. Um, and Lord, I just pray that everybody here and now um, have heard something that they can take forward mm -hmm. to uh, motivate them to listen to your word over yes. everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Lord, um, you are the true shepherd. You are yes. the leader that will help uh, lead us. The only thing that will lead us through this life yes. um, into the eternal life. So Lord, I just thank you so much for that. Um, it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.